Hey guys. Okay. Um, so I'm going to attempt a lecture like this. Um, what you're looking at is the screen on my iPad. Um, and I'm going to just kind of write on this PDF sort of similar to how I would write on the board. Um, it will probably get messy because my stylus isn't the best. So just bear with me if you need to pause at any point or mute me is totally fine. Um, but just as we get into this trickier stuff, I thought it would be a lot better for you to be able to hear my explanations instead of just looking through, um, solutions to things. So, um, that being said, we are starting section 12.5, which is on Taylor and McLaurin series. Um, we, in section 12.4, we looked at power series where we expand functions as power series about x equals zero. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is exactly what a Maclaurin series is. So Taylor and Maclaurin series are power series. We just haven't formally called them that yet. Um, but a Maclaurin series is basically anytime you expand a function around x equals zero and write its power series around x equals zero, that is a Maclaurin series. And a Taylor series is anytime you expand a function about something other than zero. Um, and Taylor series have a little bit of a different form um, which we'll look at in a second. Um, <clears throat> but that is basically what I have written on this slide. So if you want to pause uh, before you move on, I'd recommend pausing here so you can kind of copy this stuff down. Um, it's basically just defining what Taylor and McLaurin series are. Um, and then as we go through things, I'm going to be talking relatively quickly through them. So feel free to pause me at any point so that you can have ample time to copy things down and process things before you resume and go on. Um, okay, so this definition comes from your textbook. Um, this is a Taylor polynomial, um, which is very similar, do you notice, to a regular power series polynomial that we copied down in section 12.4. Um, they are actually exactly the same. The forms just look a little bit different because if we're looking at a Taylor polynomial, obviously A is something other than zero. If you're looking at a regular Maclaurin series, um, A is zero. And if A is 0, then that's exactly the power series that we copied down from section 12.4. Um, so just note that little difference. Um, <clears throat> but otherwise, the process for equating derivatives is exactly the same. We're just looking at functions um, at 1, at 2, at 3, whatever the case may be, and plugging those values in for A instead of 0. All right, let's look at this example. Uh, we want to write a power series for f equals the integral from 0 to x of t times cosine of t to the fifth dt. So this is a product of t and cosine to the t, cosine of t to the fifth. Um, <clears throat> okay, so in order to evaluate this integral, this example I think is pretty cool. I'm going to use power series to do that. Um, so I'm going to start with the power series just for plain cosine. Um, and that can be found, which I don't have this in my notes and I should have. Um, if you look on page 606 of your textbook in section 12.5, there's a big green box that says eight basic power series. Um, it would be super beneficial for you to be really familiar with those eight basic power series. Um, again, those are on page 606. So maybe make a note of that. Go back and look at that big green box. Um, we're going to be starting off with the, cos the power series for cosine, which is listed in that big green box. Um, so you don't have to have these eight basic power series memorized, um, but obviously it is beneficial so that you don't have to go through and derive them every time. Um, so cosine of x, let's start there. Let's see my pen. All right, so cosine of x, that is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 factorial x to the second plus 1 over 4 factorial x to the fourth minus 1 over 6 factorial x to the sixth plus and so on. I'm just going to write those first four terms. Um, so if you notice, this cosine power series is really similar to sine. Um, it is just even powers instead of odd. Sine starts with x, and then the factorials and the exponents are odd numbers. Cosine just starts with 1, and the factorials and the exponents are even numbers. Um, so they are similar. 
And so now I'm going to take basically, I'm starting with this basic power series, and I'm going to transform it so that it looks like the function inside my integral. So now this power series is for cosine of x, but I want cosine of t to the fifth. So I'm going to write this power series instead of with x, I'm going to write it with t to the fifth. So cosine of t, t to the fifth, that's a t, is equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 factorial, this is t to the fifth times 2, so t to the tenth, plus 1 over 4 factorial, this is going to be t to the twentieth, plus, oh it's a minus, sorry, minus, uh, 1 over 6 factorial, x to the t, gosh dang it, sorry, I'm getting distracted, t to the 30th. Okay, so now I have cosine of t to the 5th. Again, now I'm going to go and multiply through it by t so that I get exactly what's inside my integral. So t cosine t to the 5th is equal to t minus 1 over 2 factorial t to the 11th plus 1 over 4 factorial t to the 21st minus 1 over 6 factorial t to the 31st and then so on okay now what i'm going to do is integrate this um i know it seems weird to integrate an infinite series but long story short we can just do that it's a thing we're doing it deal with it okay all right so now i have the integral why does it look like that oh whoops sorry <laughs> the integral 0 to x t minus 1 over 2 factorial t to the 11th plus 1 over 4 factorial t to the 21st minus 1 over 6 factorial t to the 31st and so on okay so integrating like normal i'm just going to use my power rule um, now, when I'm using my power rule, I'm going to write this a little bit messy just because I don't feel like doing the multiplication with the factorials. Um, so, just bear with me there. Um, this is going to be 1 half t squared minus 2 factorials, just 2. So, this is going to become 1 over 24 t to the 12th. Now, here, I'm not going to do the multiplication. This is going to be 1 over 4 factorial times 22 t to the 22 minus 1 over 6 factorial times 32 t to the 32 and this is going to be evaluated from 0 to x okay um looks messy but we're almost there all right um, so now I'm just plugging in my bounds. When I plug in my bounds, of course, the, the lower bound is zero, so that's going to make all of these terms go to zero. Um, so I'm going to get exactly this function except with x as my variable. Um, so my final answer is going to be that f of x is equal to 1 half x squared minus 1 over 24 x to the 12th plus 1 over 4 factorial times 22 x to the 22 minus 1 over 6 factorial times 32 x to the 32 and so on. Um, I don't need a plus c so just note that because I had a bounded integral. Um, so this is my final answer here. Pause if you need to. Going on to the second part. Okay, this second part says evaluate the sixth partial sum at x equals 0 0.8. Um, so this should be relatively simple. I just want to make sure we're on the same page here. Um, I'm going to be using the function that I have down here in green. Um, the only problem is that I have only four terms, so I have only the fourth partial sum here. And I want to be looking at the sixth. So I'm really quickly just going to add in my last two terms, and hopefully you can see the pattern. Um, but this is going to end up being plus 1 over 8 factorial times times 42 x to the 42 and then minus 1 over 
10 factorial 52, sorry, times 52, x to the 52nd. Okay, so adding in those two terms gives me exactly six terms that I need for this partial sum. Um, and then you are just directly plugging in x equals 0 0.8. Um, and let's see, you should get, one second. Let's see, S6 of 0 0.8 should be equal to 0 0.31715. Um, and there is no, like, formula for typing this into your calculator. Um, so just double check that you're being careful when you're typing things in like this. You are just plugging in 0 0.8 and actually typing out all six of these terms, unfortunately. Um, so just make sure that you are careful when doing that. Um, all right, moving on. <clears throat> we have, let f be a function with derivatives of all orders and with values that are given approximately by the fourth degree Taylor polynomial shown here. Um, for part A, we want to approximate f of 2.6. Uh, what assumption must you make about 2.6 for this approximation to be valid? Okay. Um, so, if we're looking at a Taylor polynomial, um, it actually doesn't matter what f is. We don't really need to know what f is in this case uh, because um, of the definition of power series in Taylor polynomials is that they approximate our functions. So, it doesn't matter what f is. We just know that this fourth degree Taylor polynomial will approximate whatever f is. Um, so if we're evaluating f of 2.6, then I can just take 2.6 and plug it into this fourth degree Taylor polynomial, um, and hopefully I get something close to what the actual value of f of 2.6 is. Um, <clears throat> so one thing to note before I just go and plug this in um, is that this power series or this Taylor polynomial you should see is hopefully you noticed it's expanded about x equals 3 um, because we have in parentheses here we have x minus 3. What that tells us is that 2.6 should give us a relatively close approximation because 2.6 is relatively close to 3. Um, so if we're expanding around 3 any number sufficiently close to 3 should give you a pretty accurate estimate of what f is. Um, so all I'm going to do is take 2.6 and plug it into uh, p sub 4, so p sub 4 of 2.6, um, and then I trust that you can do that, so you should get here, let's see, um, you should get that this is equal to 5.886272. Um, I almost said questions. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> Can't answer those yet. All right. Um, but if you do have questions, please feel free to email me. Okay. Or text me on Remind. Okay. Um, so let's move on to part B. Okay. So use the pattern for evaluating derivatives to find f of 3, f prime of 3, f double prime of 3, f triple prime of 3, and f the fourth derivative of f of 3. Okay. Um, so we were given... Um, from power series in section 12.4, um, a few definitions that I'm going to use here. Um, we know, or actually, and I think this was written again at the beginning of this section, we know that f of 3 has to equal c naught. We know that f prime of 3, whoops, sorry, has to equal c1. We know that f double prime of 3 has to equal 2 factorial c2. We know that f triple prime of 3 has to equal 3 factorial c3. And then the last one, f, the fourth derivative of f at 3 has to equal 4 factorial c4. Um, so we're going to use these definitions. And we're going to use the coefficients that we already have. Um, so, looking here, let's see if I can color code this. Okay. So, f of 3 has to be equal to c naught. Well, we have c naught exactly here. 
in our power series. So this tells us that C0 has to be equal to 5. Um, now we're going to be looking here for C1. Well, we have again our coefficient here, C1. So that tells you C1 has to be equal to negative 2. Now let's move on to um, the rest of them. So C2 here, we have plus 0 0.6. So the only thing with these now is we have 2 factorial C2. That is equal to 0 0.6. So that tells us that C2 is equal to um, 0.6. What? Oh, I'm distracted. I'm sorry. Huh? Okay. Um, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. F triple F double prime of three is equal to two factorial C two. Got that. Okay. Where am I? Um, okay. So now we have 0 0.6. Oh, sorry. Okay. So that tells us that C two is equal to two times 0 0.6, which is, oops, squeeze that in 0 0.12. All right, let's keep moving. Now we are on C3, which we have 0 0.12. So C3, we're going to do the same thing, keeping in mind that 3 factorial is equal to 6, so I might use a little bit of shortcut. Um, this is equal to 0 0.12, which tells us that C3 is equal to 6. Uh, I'm going to squeeze this in, 6 times 0 0.12, which is equal to 0 0.72. That's C3. And then last one, C4. Let's do 0 0.008. Mm. Boom. Okay. Um, here is C4, negative 0 0.08. So this is equal to negative 0 0.08. And then I'm just going to do a shortcut and say that C4 should be equal to, um, let's see, C4 should be equal to negative 1.992. That's a 9. Um, so pause if you need to. We have one more part to get to in this. Uh, whoops. Don't know what happened there. Okay. One more, one more part to get to in this problem. Okay. Um, so for part C, we want to find a fourth degree Taylor polynomial for G of X equals F of X squared plus 3. And use it to find an approximation for G of 1, assuming that the series converges if X equals 1. Okay. Um, so, again... We're going to be using the polynomial that we have at the top of this page. Um, we are finding a Taylor polynomial now for g of x. Um, f of x squared plus 3. So instead of x up here in this polynomial, um, I'm going to be writing oops, x squared plus 3. Um, and so if I'm replacing x squared plus 3 just so we can have a little bit of a shortcut, these 3s are going to cancel each other out. Um, so I'll just end up with an x squared in here instead of an x. So that fourth degree polynomial, um, g of x, oops, don't need this, okay. That fourth degree polynomial g of x is going to be equal to, let's see, 5 minus 2x squared plus... 0 0.6 and I'm just going to multiply out the exponents so this would be x squared squared but that's just going to be x to the fourth um, and then plus 0 0.12 x this is going to become x to the sixth and then minus 0 0.08 x to the 8th, and so on. Um, 
What you might have noticed is that I passed up the fourth degree polynomial. Hopefully you noticed. Um, so we have to pay close attention to what we need here. We need a fourth degree Taylor polynomial. Um, and the fact that that doesn't mean four terms, um, that means up until we get up to degree four. Um, so that means I'd be excluding these last two terms. Um, so my, my final answer should be um, that this is just going to be 5 minus 2x squared plus 0.6x to the fourth. And that's all I need. I don't need these extra two terms. I just want a fourth degree polynomial. Okay, and I think, let's see, was that our last example? Yes, it was. Okay, so that was our last example. Um, pause if you need to. Go back through the example. Make sure that you have everything copied down. Um, and I will be uploading this shortly along with section 12.6. So stay tuned.